Hi, I hope everyone had a great day trading today. And uh, this is the aftermarket power report uh, for um, Wednesday, October 24th, to 2012. And uh, before I get started, though, if you've not received my free ebook, please just go to powercycletrading.com, put your name and email in here, and you'll get top 15 option trading strategies. So I'm going to get started here on the Outlook. And this is a, a new service that that uh, we've just started at Power Cycle Trading. And uh, it's ideal for the day traders as well as swing traders or investors who want a quick but insightful market overview from both a technical and fundamental perspective. And this comes out each and every day uh, after the markets close uh, and, you know, during the week. So, um, you know, if you're interested in this, please sign up. Go to my website, PowerCycleTrading.com, and uh, join up uh, for, for this uh, particular service. So let's uh, get started. Now, I always start each and every day with a top-down market review and analysis with our trade members, with our members at PowerCycle Trading. And so we'll start with the uh, long-term trend. Uh, the long-term trend is still currently down. And I'm going to use the S&P 500. And the trend, uh, our model that we use for this, the power cycle trading model, uh, it gave a signal to go uh, for a cycle high. So basically go neutral, get out of the market, or go short uh, based on the signal. And this came on October the 12th. Um, and so we're at the closing price at around um, uh, 1428. Current market right now today closed at 1408. So you can see cycle trend is down and this is for the long term as measured by a weekly the medium term trend is still down so the power cycle trading model went short on the 19th of October uh, and the closing price was 1433 so that's the mark and we're currently at 1408 so still headed down broke a trend line still moving down so uh, this this particular report which comes out every day will tell you when the cycles change and uh, you know so you can get prepared for your trading the next day so here's the uh, medium term intermediate term trend excuse me 60 minute time frame is what we use this is what we'll use for all of our swing trades uh, so basically had a really great caught a great move to the downside as you can see the cycle model went short on the 19th of October at around 9 central and uh, went short, uh, marked it at 14.50, the closing price on this uh, on this bar. So uh, from 14.50 down yesterday to uh, around 14.12, 12, uh, and actually flipped and went long, then went neutral again um, today at uh, 10 central. So went from long to neutral, pretty much a scratch trade. And right now, still holding neutral, markets off, but the system right now on the intermediate term time frame is neutral. But but it caught a huge move to the downside of uh, close to uh, 40 over 40 points. So not too bad. Uh, here is you know you can see here is another cycle low trade that came in at uh, nine central on the 15th, caught a huge move to the upside from 1428 up to. Uh, 1460. So, this is how it works. You know, we'll use these different time frames, and uh, then you can, uh, uh, you know, plan and uh, make a trading plan or a decision on how you want to trade based on this trading model. So that's the the S&P 500. Now I'll go through some other uh, charts as well for the Nasdaq, and I'll keep keep going. Now I like to put this up too. This gives you perspective. This is the S&P 500. This is a daily chart with just the moving averages. So this can show you the the direction of the market without price, but showing the moving averages of price. So this dash line here is a eight exponential. The dash blue is a twenty-one day exponential. The red is a twenty simple, the yellow is a fifty simple, and the one hundred simple. So by looking at this, you can see that the shorter term moving averages have all turned down, and they're actually starting to approach and cross the 50 moving average. So you know, showing an acceleration in the trend to the downside. So 
This is the 8, which is faster, but it's you know going to lead the market a little bit, and it's currently crossing the 50. So you can see here the last time the 8 EMA crossed. We had a cross right here, and then it bounced back up, and this came back in uh, uh, April. Uh, but then you can see it also then crossed later in May and had a really major move to the downside. So keep an eye on these moving averages. They're very important, and it's something that we use a lot in our trading. And we use it for the day trading. Not these particular moving averages. We have different time frames for our day trading, but I like to look at these for the longer term picture. Now here's just a regular daily bar chart of the S&P 500. And you can see here, um, you know, I also like to look at trend lines. We've broken a trend line. You've broken the 50-day moving average here, and you've broken a trend line. You broke through the 1418 level. This was the area where it broke out to the upside. This had been good resistance, and then it broke out to the upside through that 1418. Had a big explosive move right there. That was back in September, early September. So now that should have served as support, but it blew right through it. Blew right through the 50. Now it's you know working its way down to the 100-day moving average down here, which comes in about 13.95. So you know just from a chart standpoint, there's support right in here at uh, around 14.03, 1400, where this trend started. That breakout right there, and then past that, it's down to the 13.95. So a lot of times you'll get a correction back up. You know an oversold rally and they'll try to head back towards the moving averages that they've broken down from which would be prior support now it's resistance so you know if that happens we could easily go back to 1425 even up to 1430 on some type of counter rally short covering type rally so keep an eye on things you know you don't want to really get aggressive selling it here you'd rather sell when the market bounces but we're our trading models currently short uh, for the long term for the medium term and it's neutral for the intermediate term so the intermediate term being that it might be you know possibly a bounce to the upside but we'll see that's a trading model so it's a strict rule based model now one more thing to look at um, price movement and direction I like to use Fibonacci retracement so I put in the Fibonacci drawing tool from the low of June to the high back here in September and you can see here that we came down to the 25% retracement at 1421. Went right through that. Had a little bounce back up to that point. Failed. And now we're, the next support level will be right around the 100 day moving average, which is the 382, which comes in at 1395. So this is a key level here. And, you know, that's not that big of a correction if it holds here. Uh, so if it calls at 382, that's just a you know kind of a normal correction in an up move. Uh, but if it breaks through that, then the next level of support on a fib level is the 1370 level, and then the big area for usually a retracement is the 618, which comes in down around 1345. I'm going to start this one off. This is the Nasdaq 100. This is a daily time frame, and you can see here the severity of the down move it's even more accelerated and, and more pronounced look at the moving averages here so compare this with the S&P 500 from that last chart and you can see the, the the acceleration and velocity of this move down is much more powerful than the S&P 500 because these are more of the high beta stocks and the tech stocks so these have been hit the hardest you can see all the moving averages are through the 50 in this eight period exponentials all the way down to the hundred so the last time that happened you know look back over past history and look here see the eight, eight period move down and went right through it and uh, the other ones you know the 20 period moved through the 50 right here and just accelerated down so um, same situation right now we're down to the hundred these blew right through the hundred and you know kept moving down this was back in May so that shows you the the uh, momentum of this move down here's the Nasdaq 100 futures continuation on a daily so the medium term it's still holding short and it's down to the 100 day moving average here so it's very close to it's very close to going neutral 
but it's still by a thread hanging on to a short which it established on the 18th of October at um, that closing price on that day of uh, 2732 and now it's currently at uh, 2654 so still short but very very close to going neutral and then when you see the intermediate term time frame the next chart based on the 60 minutes you'll see what I'm talking about I just need to make a correction here actually the NQ this is all the way down this is the 200 day moving average here so I mean it's really it's blown through the 50 this is the 100 and now this is the 200 day moving average so you can see how the acceleration has gone through for NQ now here's Fibonacci for the NQ here's from the June low to the September high you can see the major difference uh, on the S&P it's only it hasn't even really gotten to the 382 correction here but the uh, NQ has gotten down to the 50 percent so if it breaks this 200 then the next stop is the 618 which comes in right here at 2590 so that's the look at the market I think you know tomorrow we have Apple earnings after the close uh, on the 25th and that will uh, really determine the next direction of NQ and S&P as well so uh, they're expecting uh, earnings not to be that great for Q3 because of the problems with uh, uh, yeah, the supply chain and so you could get a, a miss well it could be interpreted as bad but you never know with Apple so a lot of it could be already priced into Apple so after the um, earnings on Apple we'll see what the next leg is either up or down is what's probably going to happen so keep your eyes posted and uh, join me tomorrow so thanks have a great day trading and thank you for your